Hello, my name is Jonathan Humphreys. I'm the head of international hotel development, asset management and finance specializations at the Glion Institute of Higher Education. Welcome to Leading Hospitality Through Turbulent Times. This session is focused on artificial intelligence, big data, the Internet of Things, and the role of hospitality within the technology industry. We will be covering an overview, real life examples, careers, and the way forward. This session will be presentations and discussions of approximately 45 minutes, including the Q&A. We're taking questions in writing only, and you can submit these as we go along. And just as a reminder, this session is being recorded and will be available on the Moodle platform afterwards. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce our special guest today from Dubai. First up, we have Sanjay Nadkarni. He is the Director of Innovation and Research from the Emirates Academy of Hospitality Management. We have Florian Kriegbaumer. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Interrail. And we have Vladan Pantelek. He is the Co-Founder and Director of Operations and Development from Hoik. This session will be divided into three short presentations by each of the members, followed by a Q&A. So it's my absolute pleasure to hand over to Sanjay Nadkarni, who is going to give an overview of this fascinating hospitality tech arena. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Okay. Okay, Jonathan, I think we've just lost Sanjay. Maybe if we can move on to the next presenter for a <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> As with all these things, we're live, so this proves that we're actually live here. Um, what I would like to do now is, uh, Sanjay's back. Are you back, Sanjay? Were you on yes. mute? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. So I'm going to hand over to Sanjay, who's going to give an overview for us on all of these all these different elements. So over to you, Sanjay. Are you able to share your presentation? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, give me a sec. It's not exactly a great start for a tech related presentation when I get bombed out of teams. All right, are you all able to see my screen? Yeah, we are. If you're able to pop it in presentation yeah, mode. Yeah, right, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Perfect. Ready? Okay, so wonderful. Over to you, Sanjay. All right, uh, thanks for the intros, Jonathan, and uh, for uh, inviting me to this exciting leadership series. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you all are. Uh, big hello from Dubai. I'm delighted to be here to share some thoughts on what's cutting edge in hospitality, particularly in the post COVID-19 scenarios. So let's start off with uh, what has been the uh, holy grail of hospitality in this digital age. What you see on the screen is uh, we as hoteliers have been trying uh, to be in perennial search of answers to these sort of questions, right? And how do we do this? Using 19th century protocols with 20th century technology and living in the 21st century context. So basically we are getting nowhere and now comes COVID. So the legacy hospitality systems just aren't up to the mark. So what's holding us back from using agile contemporary digital tools that some of the other sectors have so successfully adopted? And post COVID, what's their role? Can hospitality industry continue to afford being a laggard in embracing digital transformation? Let's take a look at that. So what is digital transformation? Here, tip, this is a typical industry attitude. So to set the context, let's demystify the jargon. Uh, what is industry 4.0? What is digital transformation? Where do all these jazzy terms like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, uh, big data, IoT fit in? And what's all this got to do with hospitality? I'm sure many of you would have uh, studied these concepts in your digital or tech related courses, but nevertheless, let's just take a random walk down the jargon alley just to put things into perspective. Multiple definitions exist, but this is my favorite one because it pretty much covers it all. 
let me read it out to you in case the text is not very clearly visible to some of you, depending on the uh, screen that you're viewing this on. Digital transformation is the profound and accelerating transformation of business activities, processes, competencies, and models to fully leverage the changes and opportunities of digital technologies in a strategic and prioritized way. Now that we have looked at what's digital transformation, let's go to the next big thing, Industry 4.0 also known as industrial revolution here's the evolution graph starting from the invention of the steam engine about three centuries ago right up to where we are today and just wait till 5g rolls out and becomes mainstream even more spectacular things will happen uh, in the industry 4.0 space okay so what are the drivers for industry 4.0 here's what where we have we are let me uh Turn on my cursor so that I can uh, point out. OK, Internet of Things, blockchain, robotics, AI, mixed reality. So these are the key drivers of uh, uh, Industry 4.0. And what we will be doing in today's session is essentially focusing on two of these, which is the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. As our two other panelists, Florian and Ladan, have taken a deep dive into these technologies. Right, so let's start with IoT, Internet of Things. What is IoT? Again, multiple definitions exist, uh, but uh, despite all the prognosis differing in terms of magnitude, they all point out uh, in the same direction. There's going to be a massive growth of IoT, and particularly in the post-COVID scenario where it's all headed towards high tech, no touch. So this is something where we have sensors that automate a lot of processes where no touch is required. So uh, just look at the explosive growth that's going to happen, probably even exceeding these projections, which were probably made. Some of them were made pre COVID. OK, fine. Now that we have looked at what's IOT, let's head over to the data story. Before we go into data, a big data, let's talk about data. I don't know how many of you will agree, but uh, many people say data is the new oil, right? Uh, of course, with the current oil prices, I'm not so sure that's a great analogy, but what oil was in the past uh, uh, in terms of its uh, importance, uh, that's where data is today, essentially driving the uh, economy. Here's a task for you. Uh, you can do this uh, later, probably after the session. Figure out why Marriott paid something in the ballpark of about $14 billion to acquire Starwood. I'll give you a hint. There's a data connection. OK, so sort that out. Now that we have kind of touched upon data being the new oil, let's go to the next one, the big data. What is big data? The characteristics of big data are the so-called three Vs, volume, velocity, and variety. Volume means lots and lots of data. In our industry, there's massive amounts of data being generated from multiple sources, and IoT is only adding on and taking it to the next level of uh, magnitude. Velocity is the speed at which data changes, and also we call it data in motion because things change so quickly now, we want everything here and now, real-time dashboards, for example. Variety. When we talk about data, the first thing we think about is numbers, but no, actually about 80% or more of the data are not numbers. This is what we call unstructured data, like uh, images, text, videos, uh, voice. This is all unstructured data. And in our industry, even though we do generate lots of data, we are data rich, but analysis poor. And this is where BI, business intelligence, and AI, artificial intelligence, come in. But we have to understand there's a subtle difference between the two. Whilst most hospitality systems focus on business intelligence, the real action is taking place on the AI side, right? Hence, it's important for us to uh, uh, understand the uh, examples of AI and uh, one of the great examples in hospitality is mining guest experience sentiments. So later in the discussion, Vladan will shed light on how his startup Hoik is doing this by leveraging artificial intelligence. 
Uh, by the way, I don't know if you all have heard of what is Turing test. Just check it, check it out. Turing test AI. You can Google it and ask yourselves, are we there yet? And what would possibly happen once we cross the Turing test? OK, T-U-R-I Turing. Now, the ecosystem. Putting it all together, IoT, this is Internet of Things, feeds into big data, and big data is the fuel for artificial intelligence. So this is an upstream of opportunity uh, that our data-rich analysis poor industry should leverage post-COVID to bring back the good times. And how is this possible? Uh, Florian and I uh, co-authored this paper. The devil is in the detail. Uh, I think this paper was already shared with you all. Uh, and this is where we have highlighted uh, how data can be leveraged using IoT, using specific hospitality use cases. The next phase of this research is to assign specific machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms uh, to these data sets. So that's still work in progress, so watch out for this uh, space. So to wrap up my bit, in the post-COVID-19 hospitality world, we will have journeyed from high tech, high touch to high tech, no touch. And this is exactly where IoT and AI are set to play such a big role, right? So that's all from my side for now. And I'll hand it hand back over to, to Jonathan. Sanjay, um, thank you very much. That is that is a, a wonderful overview in terms of what's going on uh, within this particular space. And just for the students, that paper will be available on the respective platforms, depending on uh, which institution they're currently sitting in. Um, as a context for the hospitality landscape, Sanjay, maybe you can just quickly share with the students what this means in terms of hospitality in terms of the realms of big data because you touched on a question why did marriott acquire starwood um and i'm i'm looking for the answers in the chat from the students so we'll hopefully they'll will they'll answer that question but i was just wondering if you can maybe show what that means in terms of um the hospitality landscape yeah sure let me let me share my screen again are you all able to see my screen yep we can see that sanjay yeah, OK, so uh, you can see this is a typical data map of the sources of data uh, in our industry. You have room rate data, procurement data, booking data, public reputation data, housekeeping data, guest data, loads and loads of data. Add on to this IoT data, which Florian will talk about uh, later. So you can just imagine the humongous volume velocity and variety, the three V's of big data which we spoke about, which are covered in hospitality. What do we do with this data? Nada, nothing. We are data rich analysis poor. And herein lies this opportunity. So whatever metrics you want to overlay, and these are not just in terms of structured numbers, but also we are talking about un, uh, unstructured data, uh, like sentiment mining, which Vladan will take over, take over from, uh, we'll talk about. So all this data is available to us. And coming back to the Marriott Starwood uh, story, what is Starwood known for? The loyalty program, the SPG program. That's where they had loads and loads of data on their guests, okay? Insights on guest behavior and pattern. Uh, there was this just jostling between Marriott and Pingan, a Chinese insurance company, to acquire Starwood, and they were each kind of up, up, upping the ante, and eventually Marriott decided to shell out this premium to, to acquire uh, Starwood because their main uh, purpose, their main, uh, the value that they saw was in the loyalty data. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to Florian Creek Baumer and what I, I like about uh, Florian's company in terms of what they're doing is it's a real example of the Internet of Things. Uh, according to current estimates, we have around 50 billion connected devices today. And if you kind of calculate that out, that's roughly seven devices per person. 
And that obviously means that some people have a lot more connected devices than others. And Sanjay, you've talked about essentially the high, high tech, low touch environment. And I, I think Florian's business is an example of both of these things coming together, the Internet of Things, the high tech, low touch, and also the, the, the um, adaption of connectivity and the emergence of connectivity. Um, so Florian, I think it's a great example also looking at the investment side, the building side, the owner side of the business with regards to hospitality. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Florian. Sure. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Thanks for the introduction. And thanks, Sanjay, for the theoretical view of, of the technologies that we're talking about today. So from my side, I've spent the last five years basically in the Internet of Things space, um, starting when it just came out, basically when the, the term just became uh, more well known. And uh, from our company's perspective, we are trying to apply this basically in hospitality. And I found a few good examples of that. And that's what I would like to walk through a little bit to see how are these things actually applied today. And for us as a, as a vendor, um, what do we see being adopted in hospitality today? So I'll share my presentation quickly and try and walk you through a few slides here. Hope you can see this. So we are looking at our business as an Internet of Things provider for hospitality. So we make our own software and hardware and, and deploy it in hotels. What do we do? We have a few different products basically, and I'm not going to go too much into the products themselves. It's not a pitch about the company, but this is the context basically in which we're working in. It's uh, control of the room environment, control of energy consumption in the room, control of water in the room as well, and I'll give a bit more details on that later, and connecting all of that through an IoT platform to allow these things to become intelligent and to become digital. And as uh, Sanjay explained earlier, for all these devices to be able to to send data somewhere and that data hopefully then being put to good use through some of the artificial intelligence technologies that are out there. So as um, Jonathan already mentioned, um, there is a lot of IoT devices out there and I'm one person that has definitely more than seven connected devices if I look around my apartment here. And the question is, are there opportunities for hotels as well? And hotels actually have realized this. So kind of in 2018 and 19, all the big chains have essentially started to develop their kind of smart room concepts. And those are all based on Internet of Things technology. So the hotels are looking at this. And as it happens today morning, I read an interview with the CEO of Hilton, who is one of those companies that has started this connected room, they call it initiative. And they have actually just said that in the post COVID world, they see this as even more important because they do see a need for um, removing some of the touch points that guests have to interact with from a hygiene point of view. We'll see some of those examples in a second. And these examples are various. So in a, in a hotel, there's tons of different mechanical devices that used to be um, not smart and had no ability to send data. So you have obviously your elevators, your um, exhaust fans, um, cooling towers and so on. And then in the room, you have your, your TV thermostats, you have uh, window blinds, you have uh, AC, you have your door lock, you have the mini bar, you have the safe. There's tons of devices in a hotel that are basically you know, furniture, but have now become uh, intelligent pieces. And I'll give some more examples of, of how that uh, works in a hotel in a second. The question is, how does this really work in a, in a hotel environment? So as a consumer, probably a lot of you have devices like these ones here. You may have a Nest thermostat or Philips Hue lights that you can control from your phone or you have a, um, a sports watch or a tracker on, on your wrist. So we have gotten used to these devices and they're all connected to our phones. So that's how we manage them. But in what we call the hotel of things, these things don't have the same infrastructure, so they are able to communicate by now. So there's fridges and motion sensors and locks that all are able to send data. A door lock, for example, it can send uh, access data. So who enters what room at what time, which is critical for security 
uh, purposes, for instance. But the infrastructure is not so clear because obviously not all, all these things can be managed by an employees or by a guest phone. And a lot of these things, they can't just communicate over Wi-Fi because a door lock communicating over Wi-Fi, for example, would only have a battery lifetime of maybe a few weeks um, at best. And that's not working in a hotel. So they have relied on different kind of technologies that some of you probably know, which are Bluetooth, um, something that is in a lot of headphones, for example, and uh, Zigbee, which is kind of the enterprise version of Bluetooth, one could say. And the question is, what's the infrastructure to make these things communicate in a hotel? So looking at this from a, a big picture, slightly technical point of view, what we're seeing is that there's a lot of devices on the right side now. So as I said, there's a thermostat, there is a light bulbs, there is motion detection, there is uh, cameras and so on that are taking data from the physical world, from the environment, or they're able to change that environment either way. And a lot of those, as I said, can't communicate over Wi-Fi, for example. They need a different kind of gateway in the middle. They need to be able to communicate over low power protocols so that they can exchange uh, this information. And they can then send information through um, in the network into the cloud, so onto servers where you then can collect all this data and you have the ability to analyze, for example, using artificial intelligence over all this information that is provided by these devices. And what's happening is that on the very left side, all the typical stakeholders that were more hands-on in the past, so they had to walk to for example, the room to understand if the fan call unit was still providing uh, cool air or heating into the room are becoming people that have to interpret data and have to look at dashboards. There's no need anymore to do this high touch interaction with the room. And this is something that really applies to everyone that works in, in hospitality. So the ability for devices to become intelligent means that the intelligent person doesn't have to go anymore and check what the device is doing. The device can tell the person. And that's a major shift in, in hospitality that, that we're seeing already. So from our perspective as Interrail, what we're doing is basically we made the thermostat, this gateway device. So our thermostat has Wi-Fi built in, it has Bluetooth built in, it has Zigbee built in. So it allows us to bridge this gap and allows a lot of different devices, a door lock, for example, as I explained earlier, to communicate over the network and provide data to, for example, the security person that in the past had to walk up to the door lock and read out some logs if that was even possible. So these are the pieces in the, the IoT game and where all these connected devices sit. Now, what are the use cases? There's quite a lot. So grouping them together, for example, we have more sustainable operations. I gave the example of the thermostat. A thermostat that can talk to the property management system knows when the room is checked out. And if the room is checked out, you don't need to cool or heat it that much. You can be much more conservative and save a lot of energy. And you can do all of that automatically. Nobody has to do anything manually. On the operational efficiency side, I gave the example of the lock, but there's many others. For example, if you have a mini bar that can report when it's been used last, and if it's been used since a housekeeping or room service attendant has last checked it, then you don't need to visit it again if it's not been opened since you last checked it. For sure, nobody has taken anything. And a lot of mini bars are not used every day. So there's a lot of room to make your operation run much more efficiently, uh, efficiently and to again avoid the room visit, avoid the high touch interaction. And on the guest experience side, this is a little bit what the Hilton CEO has referred to in the interview that I read this morning, that he said there is now a certain apprehension of guests to interact with the room. So for example, light switches, thermostats are very high touch normally, and they're obviously a prime um, transmission factor for bacteria and viruses. So if you have connected devices, for example, the light and the thermostat that you can control from your own smartphone or through voice, that will make um, the guest feel much more comfortable than having to touch you know, a mechanical button that has a lot of uh, dirt on it somewhere in the creases that nobody cleans properly. And this is a real trend that we're seeing right now. So we are working with a lot of application vendors today and a lot of companies that provide voice solutions that want to control the thermostat, the heating, the cooling um, and lights and curtains and do not disturb and all these kind of things uh, digitally. So from a guest experience point of view, there's opportunities to the Internet of Things as well. 
And kind of a prime example that sort of brings all these together is the, the water management solution. So this is something that is, is quite new um, and the adoption will probably take some time, but we're seeing this and um, we, we have examples of, of this being put into hotels. So what we've done here is we created a system that turns water control in a hotel room digital. So if you think about how in the past you control your shower or your wash basin or your bathtub, this has not changed in the last 50 or 100 years. It's always been the same. Sure, there's some low flow shower head or things like that, but other than that, it's always been the same. And we've turned this digital. So we have the ability for the guests to control this through a touch panel. So that is obviously much easier to control than trying to find the right mix of hot and cold to take your shower, which, you know, you waste water for five minutes in the process. Here it's, it's a one touch of a button operation. And behind the scenes, it allows us to track um, what people are actually doing, how much water they're using, um, what uh, temperature they're using the water. At. We can make adjustments, for example, from a hygiene point of view. Uh, you can automate a lot of the operation that used to be manual. For instance, when the room is checked out, the system can automatically use hot water to flush the pipes every two days to prevent Legionella from spreading. And these are all very, very strong examples of where things that used to be mechanical and used to need human interaction suddenly operate independently, automatically collect and share data and talk to other systems. So this is really a, a good example of this. You would say, well, this is all in the future, but actually it's not. So here's an example of a property in France where we installed this. So there's a basin control and a, and a shower control here. Um, we've worked with some other hotels here in Dubai, for example, there's the address hotels that has put this in a few suites. And uh, we're seeing deployments in, in smaller and um, more uh, technology focused hotels already. And we're seeing that the big chains are picking this up and are trialing it. And it's just one example of where the Internet of Things can really change um, something that has been the same for 100 years, basically. And it has to change, especially in the world where we want to be less focused on touching things and um, try and avoid, obviously, issues from a hygiene point of view. So this is a theory. But not everything here is super easy. Yeah? There's concerns that are still need humans in this whole process. So there's security. Yeah? The moment you put everything online, you make everything uh, digital, you need to have security on your radar so that these systems uh, can't be breached. And if you imagine a hotel that uh, suddenly has all its thermostats set to 32 degrees Celsius or 16 for that matter, and the hotel can't change it anymore, you will quickly have a very high checkout rate. So this is really a, a problem that needs uh, attention. And then there's the privacy concern. In Europe especially, we have very strong privacy regulations right now. And again, the more data you collect, the more you have to be aware of the implications that come with that. There is the matter of the return of investment. You know, someone needs to do these calculations and look at, is this all worth it? So Jonathan had mentioned this earlier. From our perspective, we typically sell not to the hotelier, we sell to the person that owns the building, for example, and then tries to get a, a hotel chain to to run it. And this is a quite a complex stakeholder model. You have to prove that this is worth it, obviously, for the hotel chain, but it's worth it also for the owner of the building from an ROI point of view in the end. Um, and that is uh, somebody that somebody needs to be there to, to do this exercise, to make this assessment. So there's still a human involvement in it. And in the end, somebody needs to design the infrastructure. So if you remember the slide I showed earlier with the um, communication path for these devices, there is a high complexity involved in this that needs to be managed by a human. So the role of the uh, typical hospitality employee is moving a little bit from somebody who goes to the room and interacts with, in this case, uh, things physically to somebody who needs to know how to manage these kind of things. And that's really where the transformation is happening. And we see this accelerating right now uh, due to the current situation. So that was my um, overview of where we, as a company, as a supplier to the industry, see the, the Internet of Things going and how it's being applied in a hotel and how we see that accelerating in the current situation. Thank you very much, Florian. 
Um, I, what I really liked about this is if you think about this three major game changes that we've experienced over recent years. First of all, we had 9-11 with the upsurgence in massive security requirements in the hospitality space. Then obviously with the focus on, you know, the, the warming of the planet with regards to sustainability. And now obviously COVID-19 with uh, focus on cleanliness and, and low touch. I think obviously the Internet of Things and your solutions are going to be highlighting the opportunity for both the owners and the operations um, and the brand companies to find holistic solutions for the future. Um, so that's really on the asset side that we've done some focus and on the Internet of Things. I'm going to hand over to Vladan Pantelik, who is from Hoik, and they are focused on mining the guest experiences, looking at collating all of those different attributes of data and really making it helpful for the operations uh, teams and the corporate teams um, uh, at, at the property, above property level, above the F&B level. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to Vladan. Over to you, Vladan. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Jonathan mentioned, um, I'm a co-founder of the HOIC, uh, which is the sentiment mining uh, and experience mining platform. Uh, so I'll share my slides as well. But just word to add as well is that uh, I'm working on a both sides uh, of the hat. Uh, I also work in the industry. I work for Jumena Hotels uh, and Resorts, uh, which are proudly owner of the Burj Ara, one of the most famous hotels in the world. Uh, and I work there as well as a head of revenue operations. Uh, and then I have also the founded the, this company, Hoik. Uh, reason why I came up with the Hoik and all this was actually part of the frustration with the current practices and processes that are applied within the hotel industry itself uh, and inability to understand the qualitative data. And even when I was studying uh, uh, in the Emirates Academy, uh, I was always frustrated with a lot of text and stuff. So I was always wondering how to turn this into the meaningful insights and number. And that's where the idea for Hoik started. Uh, so I'll, get, I'll quickly give an overview just to understand what is, what is this for. Uh, and then obviously I'll provide example of uh, uh, one of SME businesses that it's one of our clients. Uh, so as I mentioned, name of the company is uh, Hoik. Uh, main uh, uh, objective is mining experiences. Uh, we have a two core features, customer MX uh, and employee MX. Uh, so we basically uh, cater to both sides of the businesses in, in hospitality for the employees and for the customers. Uh, mainly focused for the service industries uh, involving hospitality, tourism, airlines, uh, public administration, education, banking insurance, etc. So uh, how the process works? Uh, many people wonder what's the sentiment, so I'll touch on that. Uh, and previously also Sanjay and Florian have touched on the data collection and role of AI and BI. Uh, so I will sort of explain how we uh, sort of turn AI insights uh, into the really good BI, uh, sort of uh, AI findings into uh, really good BI insights. So as you can see here, platform HOIC itself collects uh, two processes, external data collection process, uh, collects information, so textual analysis from various uh, 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 review sites. Uh, on the left side, you can see we uh, collect information from Hotels.com, Google Reviews, Expedia, Booking, uh, Agoda, uh, Hotels.com, uh, TripAdvisor, Yelp. So we, coll we collect that qu uh, uh, qualitative data and we turn it into the quantitative. Uh, an IDCP internal data collection process, it's basically built so you have service recovery, meaning when somebody is on your property uh, and when you want to find out uh, uh, the opinion about something in a the property, they can text and it's in real time reporting to you so that you can react before the guest leaves your property, you can recover that service. So both data collections are merged into one uh, data lake where it's pushed in real time as analytics uh, and turned into sentiment analysis. What is sentiment analysis? Uh, sentiment analysis is basically it's a feelings, uh, feelings about uh, around certain uh, topic or subject, etc. So for example, if I said coffee is a bad, uh, uh, coffee coffee was bad in certain restaurant, uh, the coffee becomes the subject and everything surrounding the coffee uh, sort of bad becomes the sentiment. So that bad will turn into the specific numbers, meaning that we turn that qualitative data into quantitative data in order to give the meaningful uh, insights to this uh, uh, textual analysis. 
So besides that, uh, also uh, everything happens in real time. So sentiment happens and then real notifications are coming and also geospatial analysis. Uh, why is this important? One might say um, it's because um, we segregate basically what is the highest importance for a specific guest for uh, regards to the uh, services or products that uh, any businesses are providing it. And we turn it obviously into the uh, analytics itself. So we are able to uh, quantify uh, for example, how many times people mention burger or how many times people mention specific outlet in a co bad context or good context and turn it into the insights that will uh, help you optimize obviously your business and business performance. And again, as you can see here, uh, a final uh, uh, final uh, piece, it's uh, turning this into insights. So we are using best in class BI uh, tool uh, to turn this uh, all information into the insights. Uh, maybe this is a little bit small, but again, uh, I will share this information with all you, uh, so you will have the, a bit more better overview. Uh, but basically, on our dashboard, you are able to filter out information in a real time and uh, get to uh, to know during these periods what the, what are the guests talking about you, uh, and also to uh, compare with your revenues as well. Um, this is one of the things that we're looking at uh, future predictive. Uh, analytics, uh, meaning that we are able to uh, compare sentiment uh, with the uh, revenue on that day. So, for example, if a coffee sentiment was pretty bad, uh, does that impact the revenue and vice versa? Uh, so in that way, you are able to create your unique selling propositions for any businesses that you're doing it. So without further ado, I'll move also for my last slide, which is the uh, which is the basically a uh, client, which is the Moms and Pops restaurant uh, located in Cyprus. Reason why I pick up this is because this is a really unique. Uh, we developed this solution so that we can cater to SMEs uh, across the, uh, these businesses because um, all these big solutions, uh, including the uh, internal ones, uh, are ma uh, mainly highlighting uh, the corporate and the luxury segments, why uh, many other uh, are not catering to small uh, uh, moms and pops uh, owning restaurant, family owned businesses. So this restaurant basically, uh, it's a family owned restaurant, Limassol. So we used uh, these, these process we used to analyze the results of this restaurant. Uh, and obviously bottom line to be uh, uh, where you, to grow businesses is to provide the good services and have a good product. So we analyzed the sentiment of this restaurant and figure out that people really like the food in this restaurant. So what we did, we managed to push the uh, reviews into the Google engine itself uh, through the, by use of AI. Uh, and that resulted with this client being um, uh, optimized uh, on a Google search uh, engine. Uh, so when you type best restaurant in Limassol on a Google, uh, they always come out as number one or number two, meaning that uh, in two months we were able to turn around this non-digital businesses completely into the uh, with the use of technology that was available to them uh, and optimize overall performance of the restaurant. This uh, resulted in a uh, uh, lot of customers, obviously, because each tourist that was arriving in Limassol, uh, it's looking on the Google or on where to eat and what what's the best place to eat. So. Uh, he was able to optimize performance, double the revenue, uh, double the pricing, and obviously uh, expanding businesses further. Uh, as I as you can see on the right side, uh, this is a, a classic example of search engine optimization versus search engine marketing. Uh, so uh, really beating up uh, and not spending any money, but using right technology in order to optimize your businesses. So this is basically what we do. We are a mixture of uh, machine learning, AI, and BI. Uh, so turning qualitative data into quantitative and making, uh, uh, making it out uh, as a meaningful insight. Uh, so that's it from my side. Uh, obviously, I'll come back later on uh, to share some more resources with you uh, of how can you develop uh, specific, uh, uh, specific, in specific aspects of the uh, technology such as data visualization, etc. So Jonathan, that's it from my side. Glad and thank you very much indeed, and uh, thank you for that great overview. I mean, part of this session, we really wanted to also showcase to the students a, a couple of things. One is um, that obviously this is a very fast growing area for the industry as a whole in terms of the emergence of hospitality and technology. Um, so for future careers, um, it's something that they should be looking at as an opportunity. Um, Vladan, where where can they where can they go in terms of you know they, they're interested in the area they would like to start to get um, more educated in this space 
what you know are there particular sources that they can start to look at start to get involved in what, what would you recommend for them so uh, basically jonathan um, i shared also on this chat some of the sources uh, but to be honest with you um, i was i'm in hospitality industry i work in hotels for the past 12 years and uh, past four or five years i was not into tech uh, at all uh, so just to show the idea, I started with fundamentals. I started with fundamentals with, of the Microsoft ecosystem and the Google ecosystem to understand the fundamentals. When you have a strong fundamentals, then a, you are there uh, able to develop further in terms of spe specialties. Are you going to do a BI, AI, or uh, you're going to go into coding? One thing that I learned is that many people who want to learn about technology, uh, they instantly think of coding and they get frustrated and scared uh, of going into this, thinking that this is something difficult. Uh, so what I did, uh, actually, uh, coding is just a part of the technology. I also, I'm not a coder, but uh, uh, I started learning the fundamentals from these two big platforms in order to further develop my expertise in terms of the uh, understanding overall ecosystem and how to use the uh, BI overall uh, in order to provide, uh, uh, you know, and optimize businesses. So uh, past five years, I started slowly, slowly developing and I used a lot of, uh, uh, as I shared these resources, Coursera, uh, free, uh, free uh, tools in order to learn this uh, and obviously uh, develop expertise over the past uh, three to four years. Uh, and then I'm able to connect real life scenarios and problems within the hotel environment uh, and what I've learned in order to come up with a solution. And that's how my company was born. OK, wonderful, Vladan. And Florian, a question for you. It, it, how important is hospitality education? Um, with having opportunities in this space. I mean, your your background is in hospitality as well in terms of your education. Um, what, you know, just curious for the students who are now, you know, doing a hospitality degree and they will be graduating from a hospitality, um, a hospitality education. Uh, what What's your perspective on this in terms of the needs of the overall sector? Sure, yes. Um, I'm a little bit in, in Roland's boat as well. So I studied hospitality, but I knew from the beginning that I didn't really want to go into operations, but I was able to collect enough experience to know more or less um, how a hotel works. And at the same time, I was following technology and I'm also not a coder, but uh, I've had a reasonably good sense for what could change how hotels operate. So Almost 10 years ago, I, I started a, um, working for a startup that was really, really small at the time that was working on mobile applications and tablet apps for hotels. And that was around the time when the iPad came out, so at the very, very beginning. And it, that was a, a perfect time to be in, in this space because that was about the time when all the big chains started to look at uh, mobile applications to do things like uh, direct bookings and move away from the OTAs and there uh, were digital menus for restaurants, all these kind of things. And if you can bring together some understanding of technology similar to what Vladan said, with a reasonable understanding of how a hotel operates, then you're in a good spot to work for a vendor or found a company that can develop products that really, really help the industry. And when I saw that, okay, then five years later, kind of the, the application space became, a bit more commonplace, not to say saturated, but it was the norm, let's say. And I saw that the Internet of Things could be the next one that will do the same thing. So that's when I moved on to Intrel, also a fast growing company that was, was not that big when I joined. And the same thing sort of happened that uh, over time we saw that um, things that we talked about five years ago that the hotels were maybe listening to but not really understanding now suddenly it's the other way around they come to us and they say hey what can you do for us because we need this so being in this niche and this overlap between technology and and hospitality is is a good place to be in and it's quite interesting and as Vladan said you don't have to become a coder to do that that's great, Florian. I, I think um, I think part of this is if you're interested in the sector is also just to be uh, conscious of the opportunities that are existing and may exist for the future and trying to get sensitive to some of the trends that may be occurring. And um, 
Sanjay, we have a question here regarding revenue management. Um, obviously, revenue management's been a, a hot topic for quite a long time now. Um, lots of revenue managers are getting trained in the sector, but I, I would imagine with the emergence of these areas in terms of investment, there's going to be some big shifts in the way that we perceive revenue management as a function. Um, I'll just I'll publish this question, but I just wonder if you can address that because maybe that gives the the students an idea of how just one particular area could be transformed for the future. I, I, if you're able to respond to that, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share. My, uh, are you able to see my uh, screen? Yes, we are. We can see the left hand side. Yeah, RM 1.0. RM 1.0, brilliant. So this is what revenue management is about today. And in um, most hotels, that is still being practiced, right? So often you get to hear hoteliers complaining about how the online travel agencies have uh, stolen their share of the Kimmer by charging commissions, ranging anywhere between 15 to 30 percent. Uh, what are these online travel agencies? These are just data aggregators. So that brings me back to the, the our discussion before that uh, data is ruling the rules. So that's the new oil. Now, on the other hand, how have these OTAs actually managed to leverage this data by using AI techniques, by uh, uh, digging deep into what the story, uh, what the patterns are? And this is how we've come now into what is called revenue management 2.0, which I'll populate on the other side of the screen. So instead of having a rules based statistical model, which is oftentimes what our hospitality systems, our legacy systems do, now it's all AI driven. It's not just historical data, but real time internal as well as external data. So you can have your weather or any events happening near you actually influencing your pricing, right? So your ability to do that is reflective of, uh, of, uh, of your uh, your your stature to move into the revenue management 2.0. Uh, again, when it comes to maximizing occupancy, that is typically the goal for traditional revenue management systems. Whereas in uh, RM 2.0, it's more about maximizing the net revenues, not just on the occupancy side. And instead of focusing just on the guest rooms, we focus on all the revenue streams, so uh, upselling uh, uh, any other situation where there is a potential to uh, uh, up the revenue streams. And in in revenue management 1.0, the classical revenue management, you have limited automation of channel distribution and pricing recommendation. So typically there is a human override. Whereas uh, when it comes to RM 2.0, it's complete automation of channel distribution. Uh, you see siloed uh, systems which are completely separated from operations and marketing, whereas in RM 2.0, it's all integrated all in one. So there are no data silos. All the silos are broken. There's a data lake and there can be uh, an optimal output where marketing data talks to operations data, operations data in turn talks to uh, revenue data. So this is revenue management 2.0. And all this is based on uh, industry 4.0 technologies. Sanjay, thank you very much. So I think that gives an indication of also how the roles are going to be shifting for the future and also in terms of the career opportunities. Um, I'm conscious that we have uh, gone over our 45 minutes allocated. Um, I'm just checking for additional questions. I think we've responded to the questions that have come through so far. Um, I would just like the opportunity, if you have one takeaway that you would like to share with the audience with regards to either your career or this particular area, um, or their opportunities, um, it would be great if you could take the opportunity to to share that now. Um, who would like to start? Can I pass over to Florian? Would you like to go first? Sure, no problem. I think from my side, um, the example I gave earlier is kind of the key one. You know, 10 years ago, an engineer in a hotel uh, was responsible for going with a plunger to fix the toilet and you know, no offense to any engineers in the hotel but really the, the mechanical work was the 
the key of their job. And now an engineer needs to know how their thermostat is communicating over the network to the PMS system to do efficient energy management. And this transformation has happened really, really quickly. It's, it's a few years and it's happening not just in the engineering space, it's happening in security. When you talk about door locks, it's happening in um, guest experience. When you talk about voice control or tablets, it's happening with the compendium in the room that used to be a paper-based uh, item. Now it's managed digitally. So in every job from marketing, engineering, IT, security, revenue management, we had the example, you have to have some familiarity with how technology works, even if you're not a coder. And not all of that you will be taught in university. You have to figure out yourself how some of these things uh, fit together. And you'll have an advantage if you know them when you come out of uh, university into the workplace. Wonderful, Florian. Thank you very much. Vladan, can I pass over to you? Your, yeah, your just to add on the... Yeah, just to add on the Florian ones, when he mentioned you have to deliver on your own. Um, I also study full time, my bachelor studies and my master studies uh, while I was working full time. So I was employed and study at full time and also I managed to co-found the company as well. So I think uh, really working and having passion for something will take you uh, to the next level. For example, uh, in very short time, I became a specialized in data visualization. So I became an expert in data visualization in, in a few years. I did not have any knowledge. So I think it's picking what you really want and then just building on it and uh, grinding really hard. Uh, hard work pays off. <laughs> so that's what I can say. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Vladan. I think uh, combining your passion following it uh, to all these different degrees is is, uh, is great advice. Um, I'm going to um, finish with uh, Sanjay Nadkani. Sanjay, thank you very much for inviting your uh, previous students, now graduates, now successful entrepreneurs uh, to this to this panel. Um, any any parting words of wisdom from your side? You've seen many students go through your program um, at the Emirates Academy. Um, there's one final question here as well. Is there any book suggestions? So maybe uh, as a as a kind of wrap up, if if uh, you know you have any inspiration from that side as well to give the students, um, that would be great. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, just to add on to what Florian and Ladan said, uh, we are now in a situation where more of the same I'm going to happen post COVID. So this is a great opportunity for you all as students to upskill and uh, help bring the romance back into hospitality using industry 4.0 tools. You don't need to be a geek to do this, just as uh, Florian and Radhan have pointed out. Uh, what you need is domain knowledge combined with passion for tech. And uh, as they say, uh, just do it and stay safe. <laughs> That's it, just do it. Perfect. OK, wonderful. Sanjay, any um, there is a uh, any book suggestions that you've kind of passed on to your students? If there was one book that you recommend to your students, is, do you have one that you say this is a good starting point, whether it's to do with not necessarily this space, but maybe, you know, doing a startup or getting investors or how do you kind of point the, your students in the right direction? The problem with most books is by the time they're written, they're outdated in this kind of attack. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so so as as I have one that done with OK, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Vladan take that question, but uh, typically what, what I've been doing is pointing students to the most current resources. These could be industry white papers, uh, digital resources or like online resources. Vladan has shared the list and uh, depends on what you want to do. So if it's for data visualization, yes, there could be a starting point. If it's into machine learning, artificial intelligence, there could be another starting point. So it really depends. There is no like one book that is sort of the gospel that covers everything. I uh, believe okay. Ladan can answer this from his perspective, uh, probably a book that he has to share. Thank you, Sanjay. Ladan? So uh, uh, Sanjay said there is no one go to thing that you can find everything out, and I disagree with that. Uh, I would call it Google, uh, because on a Google, uh, you not only have the books that are most recent, but also the manuals and how to do things and step by steps are all present there. Uh, so I think most of the information is on the Google. So I, I think that's the only book you actually need these days uh, uh, if you want to learn technology and most updated ones as well. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. I, I just want to say, you know, every every time I do one of these sessions, I'm getting more and more excited by our industry and our sector. I think what is happening with this industry is transformational. It is a brilliant time to be in the sector. I think it's a wonderful time to be doing an education and, and, and graduating in the future. There's going to be so much opportunity. And um, I, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say a big thank you for sharing your energy and your insights and your expertise, uh, Sanjay, Florian and Vladan, thank you very much indeed. And uh, big thanks to all of the students who are listening today and faculty. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome.